Good afternoon, everybody. Um, welcome to the FCA Atlanta webinar on FCA 101. We have um, put together a couple folks that uh, can give us an overview of FCA and what's going on around the country. As we started doing webinars, we've expanded the audience to the other chapters in Georgia. So if we have uh, attendees uh, from uh, Fort Gordon and Robbins, welcome. And uh, we hope that uh, you get some value out of this. Uh, everybody is muted upon coming into the meeting, so uh, if you have questions, you can ask, or if there's something that we, when we have a discussion, we can unmute uh, some participants. But um, so right now, the, the meeting today is hosted by the Young FCM, and that's uh, Blair Tithe and Taylor Cinnamore. And you guys go ahead and take away. Oh, great, Paul. Well, hey, first of all, uh, good morning or good evening, wherever you're, depending on where you're signing in. And I know we have a global audience at some point and uh, sometimes, but yeah, hey, first of all, uh, name is Blair Ty, and uh, glad everyone's joining today. I'm an Atlanta local, and actually I was sharing with the team earlier, I'm actually uh, newer to AFSIA myself. I uh, had initial exposure um, when I came off active duty as an Army officer, and my leadership at the time said, hey, you need to go to Virginia and go to an AFSIA meeting, and I said, naturally asked, what is AFSIA? So I'm glad I went, got exposed to this great organization. I think for those who are on the call today, it's going to be pretty helpful as well. You're going to find this is a great organization to bring in DOD, uh, the federal government, and industry together, as well as some great volunteer efforts supporting our federal civilians and uh, DOD service members. But a quick little background myself before I hand it over to uh, my, my teammate, uh, Taylor, down here in Atlanta. I'm actually a prior U.S. Army officer on the active duty side and now part-time in the reserve, so actually an end user myself, so I appreciate it when industry brings these kind of capabilities and uh, with our requirements, so it helps us quite a bit. I'm actually at Beam Software now uh, over here in Atlanta and uh, supporting the DOD and Intel community, so glad to connect and talk further um, on those topics if you find there's something that we can help you as well. Uh, glad to connect and, and discuss further. So that being said, let's introduce uh, Taylor Cinnamore and uh, Taylor. Hi guys, thank you so much for coming. My name is Taylor. Blair and I um, are, are supporting Young FCNs here in Atlanta together. Um, Job-wise, I am working for an IT services company called Tech Systems, doing a lot of recruiting, supporting a lot of different government contracts. Um, but I'm really excited to, to have everyone here and get some more support for Young FC in Atlanta. Yeah, great, thanks Taylor. So with that being said, we brought on uh, a couple I would call celebrity guests today and uh, glad to have them. Uh, we, they are actually up towards the uh, strategic level of AFCIA, and they were kind enough to come by and uh, give us an overview of AFCIA 101 since we have so many new members, especially in the Atlanta, Atlanta area. Uh, we have Tina Jordan, who is the VP of AFCIA International on this morning, as well as uh, Alicia Kelly, who is a co-president of AFCIA International for the young AFCIA portion. So thank you, ladies. We appreciate you joining, and uh, we look forward to taking a step back here and allowing you to uh, give us an overview. So thank you. Great, Blair, thank you so much. And thank you to, uh, to you, Taylor, Paul, and Pat for inviting Alicia and I to be part of today's call. And as I said earlier, talking about FCA is one of my favorite things to do. So love, love being on this call, certainly appreciate everyone's time. I don't take it lightly that you're giving an hour of your day to us today. So we're gonna try and make it uh, very worthwhile for your time. Just a couple things about me and how I got started in AFCA. I always love hearing how people got in, got started. Mine was a little fortuitous. I, I spent 20 years in the computer industry and I was working for computer sciences at the time. And our president was looking down the hallway as he said to somebody else, we need somebody to represent CSC in AFCA. And I happened to walk across the hallway at that time. And I was in his line of vision and he said, Tina, you would be great. And so that's how I got, I had no idea what AFCA was. He asked me to represent computer sciences uh, to the DC chapter and the Nova chapter. So I got involved in both chapters and um, ended up being asked to be an officer in the DC chapter, worked my way in different positions and ended up being the first female president of the Washington DC chapter. At the same time, I was still in, uh, volunteering with the Nova chapter. And in fact, the gentleman who headed up all of their IT days, when I became the president, he called me and said, do I need to find someone else on my committee? And I said, I don't think so. I think I can be president of one chapter and still support your IT days on another chapter. He's like, okay, cause I was gonna fire you but if, before you had a chance to quit. But if you're not gonna quit, then you can, you can stay on these committees. So uh, I was, still had one foot in, in both uh, chapters of AFCA. After I finished being the president of the DC chapter, 
they asked me to take over the education foundation. And I can tell you, uh, it was a lot more fun giving the money away than it was being responsible for earning all the money. Loved being part of the education foundation. Actually, I loved, I loved every position I had in FCA. I obviously am a big fan or I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. After the education foundation, um, I was asked to be on the board of international. And at that point, I was on the board for about a year and then decided to retire and was going to spend a year trying to figure out what I wanted to do next. And I was looking at different franchises to buy and was going to get completely out of government IT and contacted FCA to let them know that I was going to vacate my board seat while I took this year off to figure out what I was going to do and got a call the next day from the CEO that said, come work for us. So I didn't get my year off, uh, but it was a great decision to come work for FCA. And that was about six years ago and um, have enjoyed every minute of it. And very glad I didn't leave the, the government IT world. When I go to FCA events, it's like homecoming. I've been around a long time, know a lot of people. These are my friends. Um, and so I, I enjoy seeing folks at the FCA. And of course, love working for an association that serves those who serve. Um, so that's it about me, a uh, little bit about FCA. So if I can go to the next slide. I don't know if many of you know how FCA got started, but it got started back in 1946 with General Sarnoff. And uh, D General David Sarnoff had realized through World War II that you need strong relationships in time of peace to have good relationships at work in time of war. And so he brought together the US Veteran Signal Association, the American Signal Corps Association, and combined them to form the Armed Forces Communication and Electronics Association. So for 70 years or more, we were Armed Forces Communication and Electronics Association. We're celebrating our 75th birthday now. And uh, just a couple years ago, we dropped the actual Armed Forces Communication and Electronics Association because we're a lot more than Armed Forces. We do a lot with the law enforcement agencies. We do a lot with intel agencies, do things in the healthcare. Uh, so we're not just armed forces, and we certainly are not just communication and electronics. We are the full spread of C5 ISR. So much like IBM used to be international business machines, and now it's just IBM. Um, CACI is now just CACI. We are just AFCIA, and you'll be hard pressed to find on our website anywhere that actually spells out the acronym. We are AFCIA, but that's just a little bit about the background of it. And uh, General Shea is my boss. He came in from the Marine Corps by way of um, worked in industry for a few years. So he has the military background, the industry background, and he heads up FCA and I couldn't ask for a better boss. Next slide. So a little bit about FCA expansion. So we were founded in 1946, but then working closely with um, NATO, we uh, started forming other chapters and you can see there the European chapters. We have more than just that. We have chapters in the Czech Republic and Poland and Hungary, uh, Romania, but those are kind of the original chapters that culminated in us having a large enough presence in Europe to open up the uh, European office, which is in Belgium, um, Brussels, in 1981. We've now have 140 chapters around the world. We are in 30 countries, and we are over 31,000 members with more than 1,600 industry members. <clears throat> Excuse me, and I'll talk a little bit about more about that in just a little bit. Next slide. So who we are. In a nutshell, we are a member-based nonprofit association for the CF, C5I and technology professionals. So that's my elevator speech when I talk to people. We have the mission of connecting professionals and fostering knowledge for the purposes of global security. And we make sure that the technology and strategy needs of the defense, homeland security, and intelligence communities align with that of industry, military, and government throughout industry, military, and government. FCA has a very strong name brand. When you say FCA, um, those who know us, um, if you're in the, in the defense group, if you're in the IT industry, we have a very good name brand recognition. Um, I get frustrated that if, that if you don't know FCA, you don't know FCA. So I'm trying to cast the net wider and get our name known um, further and wider. As I mentioned, we're making inroads into um, Homeland Security, into intelligence. That's been going on for several years. We're trying to get into the health agencies now. Um, so we are getting our name known in a broader way, but for those who know it, I mean, when you think of FCA, the keywords I hear are, are ethics and integrity. And um, we don't lobby, we're known as honest brokers, so we don't represent anybody on the Hill. Now, when I say we don't lobby, that doesn't mean we don't educate. Lobbying, I used to, be, I used to work with a lobbyist at CSC, 
and um, lobbying is considered lobbying when it is um, attached when you are influencing uh, for a certain piece of legislation. Uh, we don't do that. Uh, we did recently sign a de uh, defense related associations letter in uh, support of a piece of legislation. So it's the only time I've noticed a lobby. This just happened last week, but it was for the CARES Act and it was uh, the right thing to do for our members. We weren't on the Hill lobbying, but the folks who were on the Hill lobbying came back to the defense um, uh, de defense related associations, which is a group that meets uh, once a month, General Shea's part of this group, and asked if the DRAs would be willing to sign this letter to ask for an extension of the CARES Act. And it was just the right thing to do for our corporate members. So absolutely we did but we were not up there lobbying. Uh, we were just supporting in this phase of the letter. Um, and that's the first time I've seen this actually do something as far as legislation, but there's not a door in the Pentagon. There's not a congressional office that we cannot get into to help educate about what our um, members are interested in. Um, we're highly sought after for thought leadership and engagement. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the thought leadership um, in a little bit and about the networking opportunities. So if we can just go to the next slide. So what we do, uh, we connect great ideas, vital, solution, vital solutions and innovative people uh, for the advancement of the global security mission, as I mentioned. We do that through the ethical forum that we provide for the exchange of information. So military and government have IT needs, industry and academia have IT solutions and FCA brings those together in an ethical forum for the conversations that need to take place for global security. We do that, we used to do that um, through our on-site on -site events. We now are doing that through our virtual events. I don't know, uh, thanks to COVID, that our virtual events will ever necessarily go away fully. We've seen that there's a real need, for instance, our small business, which I'll talk about in a little bit, um, our small business or, uh, programs have gone all virtual and the feedback we've gotten has been tremendous because before when we did them here in the Washington DC area, it was great and we would have people fly in from around the country and have customer meetings at the same time, um, same, same time frame as we'd have our uh, events so that they could do both um, in the same visit. But, um, but we're also hearing that it's really nice for them to be able to attend virtually and not have to fly in and still get the same great content that we're able to provide. So I think that as far as small business events, we'll always have some form of a virtual um, component to it. Um, but, we, but for the most part, through our forums of bringing government, military, industry, and academia together um, for these conversations is really what FC is known for. There's some slides that I'll have later on to talk about some of the things we're lesser known for, but I'm just gonna hit on that now. Um, we have committees. Our committees are made up of really kind of the who's who in the IT world as far as government IT. And um, our, our Intel committee is headed up by a former director of the NSA. I mean, and then DIA folks are involved with it. Um, we have Sue Gordon is now on that committee, former CIA. CIA. So uh, we kind of have the who's who. Our committees are, are well thought of and their thought leadership is, is sought after to the point that we get asked by different government agencies and I'm not gonna get into specifics about what government agencies, but to write white papers um, for them. And um, because of the thought leaders that we have involved in FCA. And so, um, so that, that's another way that we get this information exchange is through white papers that we have. We also have resources and I have a slide on this later on um, that we have, um, white papers on our websites that people can write and, and have out there to help spread information and exchange of information. We have blogs, we have different LinkedIn forums. So there's a lot of different ways that people are able to exchange information through FCM. Um, actively engage governmental policy matters. General, again, General Shea and General Wood are both um, highly respected in the, in the Pentagon and there's not a door that they can't get in and they have conversations I mean, General Shea, the other night, I needed something with the Air Force. And he's like, well, I'm talking to the CIO tonight at nine. So yeah, late into the evening, he has these phone calls with folks. Um, so we have, he has a lot of connections. He and I have a, a healthy debate. He gets invited to a lot of meetings. For instance, he was invited to two meetings at the White House uh, last year. So was his NDIA counterpart. The NDIA counterpart wrote about it in his, in his um, letters to their members. And General Shea didn't. And I said, I need our members to know that you have a seat at this table. I want them to know that you're representing them. And he said, yes, but 
I can say things and I can get invited to meetings. He's the only one that got invited back to the White House, by the way. He said, because people know that I'm not going to be out there touting what we're talking about. So he really is a trusted advisor. Um, so he and I have kind of gotten to an agreement that I'm allowed to tell people that he's gone to these meetings, but he's not going to write about it in his quarterly uh, president's newsletter. But just know when you hear about big meetings taking place that a lot of our other associations are involved in, General Shea has a seat at the table and he has the ear of the people um, that, that need to hear FCA's message and they respect him and they invite him back and they call him um, for, for his thought leadership. So, um, a couple other things on this slide. Okay, yep, we grow and maintain active membership through the C5I communities. We offer professional development opportunities. I'll get to that. And we give back, I'll get to that. So let's move on to the next slide. I'm trying to be cognizant of the time here. So FCA I mentioned is made up of 31,000 members, over 31,000 members, and they are broken up and arranged into 140 chapters in 30 regions. So we have headquarters, we have the regions, and then we have the chapters. Um, the chapters are the face of FCA to, to our individual and industry members. I would submit that most FCA members who engage at different events don't even know that there's a headquarters back in Fairfax, Virginia. What they know about FCA is what they know from their local chapter. So all of you who support the local chapter, you're out there doing God's work for us. And we certainly appreciate it. What you do and the content you bring and the value that you bring is what people know of FCA. So thank you for what you do with all of that. Um, you are the day-to-day -day connection. You offer the educational opportunities. We have chapters that do breakfasts. We have chapters that do lunches. We have some chapters that do a half-day symposium, full day, multiple day. We have some chapters that do events every bit as big as FCA International, our headquarters does. Um, and then they're run by, by volunteers for the most part. So uh, we have very active chapters that are out there providing content and providing value to our members. And we certainly thank you for that. Our chapters facilitate networking among our four constituent groups. And our chapters afford the opportunities to lead, learn, and contribute um, for, their, for their members. So next slide. So chapters um, contribute to membership development. Um, chapters offer scholarships in their community. Chapters offer mentoring. Uh, I, I've seen a few different ways of mentoring. Sometimes chapters will set up a mentor protege program. Um, I've also been invited to a chapter that does a, a dinner and they'll put um, six proteges and two mentors at a table and it's it's the gloves are off and it's no questions can't be asked and uh being one of the f seasoned people that i call us um with the with the young fcns it's been interesting to hear some of the questions and just the the transparency that there is out there and certainly appreciate that and, and the opportunity for some of us who've sort of been around a while to share and help mentor um, other folks and that's through the chapters uh, we do that. We have a, a small business mentoring program at the headquarters, but, but chapters um, as well do mentoring programs. We offer off educational opportunities. Um, chapters um, provide that through when they have events, they can work with headquarters to get their events um, certified and approved for continuing education units. Um, at headquarters, we have agreements with um, MindEdge and with FedLearn that people can go online and get online training. And we have agreements with American Public University Systems, um, Montreat College, and the Sands Institute that folks can go and get certifications and degrees, and they get those at a discount. Um, so that's those are the educational opportunities that, that are afforded. So local community support. During this time of COVID, it's been interesting, you know, we've had natural disasters, we've had earthquakes, we've had hurricanes, to see the FCA chapters come together and help the community, whether it's donating to help the schools rebuild and get some of their computers back on, on track, um, providing food to local food banks. Um, with COVID, it's been, again, uh, trying to help communities get laptops to kids or, again, food in the food bank. Uh, just different ways in which chapters reach out and support their community through FCA. Chapters are also the reach back to headquarters. And um, you have Pat Harrington, who's an amazing regional vice president and an amazing FCA. She's been an, an FCA for many years. She has a lot of information and a wealth of experience. And she is the one who is the li linkage between headquarters and chapters. It'd be hard for the headquarters staff, which I'll get to in a moment, it'd be hard for the headquarters staff to interface directly with 140 chapters. But by interfacing with the three, 30 regional vice presidents, those regional vice presidents then 
link to the chapters and they provide information from headquarters to the chapters and then back. We hear from the regional vice president about chapter needs and we respond to that as well. Um, so the, the regional vice presidents are key to that, but chapters also have a responsibility in keeping that connection to headquarters. And one way is through the annual report. Headquarters would have trouble knowing really what's going on out there if it wasn't for this annual report. And that's where we get to hear about all the great things chapters are doing with their events, with their membership growth, with different campaigns they're doing. So the annual report is, is exciting for me to read. Um, and, and that's the one time a year that I get to formally um, get the assessment of, of all the different chapters and, and what they're doing for our communities. Um, head, chapters also have delegates that they um, identify to vote for our board of directors and our um, ex -com slate. Next slide. So we have chapters, we also have headquarters. One can't exist without the others. There'd be no need for headquarters without chapters and chapters would be have trouble existing without headquarters. So we were dependent on each other. It's a great relationship. Um, and we certainly appreciate the, the, the chapter officers and all that you do um, to, to connect with headquarters and um, communicate with us. And these are just some of the things that we do to help support you. So we have Pat Myron, he's our CFO. He's amazing with financial and tax advice. We do have chapters that um, have gotten into some tax issues and Pat is amazing at working with the IRS and, and working with chapters to help that problem resolution. Um, we have insurance coverage for all of our directors and officers. So if something happens at an FCA um, and someone chooses to sue your chapter, if, you're, if you haven't done anything illegal, <laughs> then we have, we have li general liability insurance to cover you as a director and an officer of, a, of an FCA chapter. We give pre free publicity to chapters. And if you're not taking advantage of this, you need to. So you get two ads per year in Signal Magazine. And you also get um, anytime you want to put something on the, in our weekly digest and an event, if it's on our FCA international calendar, so our weekly digest goes out every Friday and everybody in FCA gets it. So it goes out to 31,000 plus people. It draws, if you look at the bottom, you'll see that it draws from the FCA international calendar, the different events. So if you're doing events and they're on our calendars, you get free publicity right there in our, um, in our weekly digest. And if it's a, a big event that you would like even more publicity for, then you can talk to Sean McGowan and he can get a special mention in the weekly digest for it. Um, conference support and events. We have folks um, out of the chapter level who ne sometimes need help getting speakers and they need help just with bodies to be there to help with registration. And if you need that, the FCA um, headquarters will help, to help get you people to, to support that and they'll help get speakers for your um, different events. Another thing we do is we host websites. If you're not having your uh, website hosted by FC International, you should because you shouldn't need to pay um, for web hosting when you get it for free. We've also had situations um, where we've had chapter web webmasters go dark through a change of jobs or life circumstances. They just go dark and the chapter is not able to update their website. If it's hosted by FCA, we're able to do that. And Jim Griggs, who's our CIO, is amazing and how fast I mean, you, you email him, I wouldn't suggest you try it, but in general, if you email him out at one o'clock on a Saturday morning, he'll still respond. I mean, their team is amazing at how quick they respond. I don't know when they sleep, but they um, get chapter websites up and running. They can set up chapter email addresses um, to forward from another address. So if you want to utilize chapter officers, um, so you can have president at, or president FCA Atlanta at FCA.org and then all of the, or for any chapter officer position, Jim can set it up and then have emails routed to that, um, e through that email address to your personal email, um, one of the services he does. The other thing, one of the other things we do is uh, live training webinars and chapter officer boot camp, which we just hosted that last week, two weeks ago, two weeks ago. And uh, we have a website that I just sent to Paul recently with all the links for that chapter officers boot camp. We have um, social media that we that we provide social media support. If you have things you want us to put on LinkedIn or Instagram, we can do that. Um, and we have webinars every quarter about different how to grow corporate membership, how to do your rec your reporting, how to maintain your website. We also have an ethics one that we do once a year. So lots of different training opportunities for chapter members. Next. Okay, these are just a couple other things I'm going to quickly go through. We have a chapter officers tools. 
which is available through our portal if you're a chapter officer then um, you should have access to that if you don't um, let me know or let paul know and we'll get you that access those are some of the things you can do through the chapter officer tools the weekly digest i've mentioned um, and we have a, a dashboard for chapter officers to go in and look at their um, health of their chapter so let me move on with that next slide So this is a membership team. This is just to put some faces with the people that you work with. Um, the, the Sandy on the left and the two women that are aligned to her, that's your service center. They answer calls, reset passwords, handle all the registrations and invoicing for all of our members. Susan and Sheila, uh, the next two from the left, are our professional development center. They work with our universities and with our continuing education. Shantae um, heads up our corporate membership team. You can see there's five people associated with that. Elizabeth heads up the small business and then the three women in the middle. Um, they do a lot to do with our engagement aspects and um, renewal aspects of our corporate memberships. And then you have Sean and Susan. If you've been around FC at chapters for very long, you are very familiar with Sean and Susan. Sean is a wealth of information in FCA. He's my go-to for anything to do with chapters. And Susan heads up our women in FCA and our awards program. They're supported by Keisha Wilson, excuse me, Keisha Watson, and Raleigh Levitt heads up our young FCNs. So for most of you on this call, I understand our young FCNs. Um, Raleigh is dual hatted. She spends half her day with me with young FCNs and half the day supporting our Intel department with the Intel events. So um, Raleigh's a great person to know, is helping to grow our young FCN business and um, certainly somebody you should connect with if you haven't already. Next slide. So these are just a couple of member benefits. I'm not going to go through them. You can read about those. Um, I think if you're already a member of FCA, you're aware of these benefits. So we can go to the next slide. Member initiatives. These are just some ideas that we've done to, to grow FCA. And this is just to give you some, some thoughts as a chapter on how you want to grow. We've done individual campaigns. Um, we've done 70 day campaign that we focused on different segments of our uh, membership for 70 days at a time, being military and government, being women, being young FCNs, whatever. We've done an each one, reach one campaign, trying to get everyone to um, sign up a new FCN. Uh, we've had corporate membership drives where we try and get the corporate member leads to fill their empty associate slots. Um, you can see the rest there. We're, we're constantly focusing on increasing women in FCA and young FCNs, um, as well as diversity. That's something that we're um, focusing quite a bit on now. And, and General Shea, for the past six years that he's been on board, has done a lot of talk about the need to have diversity in FCA and see people of color on our podium and in leadership positions. And so I don't think there's any other association in our field that's better prepared to have these conversations because it's not like this horrible thing happened with George Floyd in Minnesota and suddenly FCA has a voice. We've had a voice for, for years on saying that we need to get more diverse. We need to give people of color um, opportunities. And so you're going to be seeing diversity panels now at our FCA events. We have young FCM panels and women panels, and now you're going to see panels um, of diversity, specifically talking about diversity in the IT field. So I'm really excited about that. Next slide. So just a quick thing, membership versus sponsorship. It's amazing to me how many times I talk to a corporate member or corporation who says I'm a corporate member of FCA, and they're not. They actually sponsor a, a chapter event, and that's great. That sponsorship of a chapter event or sponsorship of an FC international event gives them a table or our marketing for that specific event, but it's not membership. Corporate membership is different. And if you're a chapter and you sign up a corporate member, then you get a finder's fee. So there's still money in it for the chapters for corporate membership. And Paul has information about that and it's in our, our chapter officers portal. But corporate membership. Um, gives people visibility 365 days a year, not just for the one or two days of the event or during the luncheon series each day of the event. Um, it's They get their um, profile written up in Signal Magazine. They get their profile put online and our online directory gets 5,000 hits a month. And they are able to, um, it's ser keyword searchable, searchable by anyone. You have to be a member to be in it, but it can be searched by anyone. And um, there's just a lot more advantages for broader and, and deeper conversations in corporate membership than with sponsorship. So just a little bit of difference on the two of them. Next slide. These are just some of our events. Again, if you've been around FCA for any limited period of time, you're aware of our big ones really are West that takes place out in San Diego every um, February, March timeframe. Um, TechNet Cyber, which takes place in the 
uh, May, June timeframe, Tecna Augusta, which takes place in August. Um, Indo-Pacific takes place in uh, the November, October, November timeframe. We have intelligence um, industry days and the INSS, which INSS usually takes place in September. Intelligence um, industry days take place all throughout the year. And these are in our small business events all throughout the year as well. And signal conference usually in the summer. It was just two weeks ago. Next slide. I think I'm wrapping up. Oh, these are just some of our publications. I mentioned before um, your, uh, the white papers that come out of our different committees. You get Signal Magazine if you're a member. Just a few of the other things you can see that we have. And our recent thing that we just came out with in June is Signal Kids. And that was aimed through third through sixth grade. Huge response to that. Very exciting that we're doing that now. We're going to have another one come out in December. It was such a popular um, publication that we're going to be doing it quarterly for now. We'll see if, um, what happens if we do it more frequently. But um, great undertaking and great response. And the idea is to get kids involved in STEM um, and not wait until they've graduated college to hear about ASEA. Next slide. Our Education Foundation, I mentioned uh, before, we have uh, scholarships that we give out um, to service academies and our, to, to ROTC programs. Uh, we have chapters who have scholarship programs. Teaching tools and grants is another one that provides money to schools and to, um, to teachers to do things in the classroom. Uh, we have folks at the chapter level who have sponsored app challenges and science fairs. So there's a lot of different ways to work in the school. The one thing that I will say about um, education, scholarships are great and I'm not minimizing them. You give a thousand dollar scholarship to an individual and that makes a huge difference to that individual. And sometimes it's the difference between whether they can go to college or not. Um, I'm also asking chapters to look at not that they don't do scholarships still, but maybe take some of that money and put it towards schools because you give a thousand dollars to an elementary school science teacher and that's a force multiplier. You're not just impacting one person's lives, you're out to in, in, affecting an entire classroom uh, worth of kids um, lives. So they're just something to consider as a chapter. We're trying to really push our, our support, our financial support and our education efforts um, really younger and younger. And next slide, I think might be my last slide. Yeah, this is my get off the stage slide. Um, you can read for yourself what we deliver. Uh, we are here to support you. We certainly appreciate all that you do out in the chapters. And then the last slide is just for um, contacts. I don't know if it's still there, if we cut that one off, but um, usually I have a contact slide. Yeah, there it is. There's a contact slide. Um, best thing, Sean McGowan or me, and we can just direct you to anybody um, so you don't have to write down all of those email addresses or take your phone and take a picture of it real quick. Um, but there you go. I didn't look as I was going through if there was questions. Paul, I don't know how you want to do this. If we want to answer questions now or wait till the end. Uh, we'll wait to the end there. I took me the time to mute myself. So Blair? Uh, yep, I'm here. So thank you very much for the opportunity to speak today. Appreciate it. And I look forward to, to answering your questions yep. and meeting everyone on the phone, hopefully at a future FC event. No, great. Thanks, Tina. Appreciate it, man. That was a great overview. So I, I learned quite a bit. Thank you. And I, I did not realize the, uh, the emphasis on STEM now. I, I know a handful of folks who are really part of that space. That, that's great. Um, well, thank you. So uh, the next portion that's more focused towards the young AFCN, um, after a good overview of AFC as a whole, is Alicia Kelly. And again, she is the vice president for AFCA International on the Young AFCN portion. So, Alicia, floor is yours. Awesome, thank you very much. Um, so, yeah, as uh, as Blair said, my name is Alicia Kelly. I've been uh, around the block with AFCA for a few few years now. So, if I haven't met you, I look forward to meeting you in the future. Uh, I am currently the international co-president for the Young AFCNs, uh, and that's represented representing the uh, national capital region. So. As far as that organizational structure works, the way that uh, my role differs from what Tina does is I am still a volunteer. Uh, I also work for a mid-sized uh, communications and IT company called Trace Systems. They have supported me throughout my uh, FCA endeavors and I really appreciate them for doing that. So um, as we kind of go through this deck, uh, I'm, I'm gonna hit some high points. Tina already covered very fantastically uh, all of the different things that FCA does. And I don't want to kind of delve too much into that. I want to focus it a little bit more on what the young FCNs are and how we tie into uh, FCA overall or the FCs and crew, as some folks like to say. Um, so yeah, moving into the next slide, what is young FCA? 
Young FCN program is for uh, professionals that are 40 years old and under, uh, and it provides networking opportunities as well as a lot of other benefits uh, with your peers uh, and with some senior leaders. So being able to kind of develop a lot of those uh, organizational relationships with people at other companies, with people in government, people in industry, people in uh, military and in academia is, is pretty valuable and it's insanely valuable for us uh, as young FCNs. So as I think I'll give my own history to kind of try and explain the three levels of engagement as far as chapter regional and international, because I know that can get really confusing and I'm, I'm, until I got actually into the role that I'm at, which is leading all of the young FCNs internationally, which is about 7,000 strong, I honestly didn't fully understand this structure. So I like to start a lot of these briefings or a lot of these discussions uh, with that simple layout. So. Uh, Tina actually mentioned her involvement with the DC chapter. So I'm from the, I live in the national capital region. So DC is actually one of the chapters that falls under my purview now as the, as a lead for that area. Um, within that as well is Northern Virginia, as she also mentioned, Belvoir and Bethesda. They're four of the largest chapters in the country, four of the largest chapters in the world. Uh, I actually started as a volunteer at the no Northern Virginia chapter. And the same person I'm pretty sure that uh, Tina mentioned that run, ran all of the IT days for Northern Virginia is the same person who got me involved in FCA overall. And what happened was I went to a Women in Nova event. There were probably 50 to 60 people there. There was a short networking event afterwards and I was sitting at a table by myself because I had only been in this industry for a few months. I just moved up from Louisiana and uh, Mr. Chuck Corday of Northern Virginia chapter walks up, asks me what I'm doing, why I'm sitting by myself, and then commands that I come over with him to sit and talk to him and a few other folks. So I did, and from there uh, on, I was voluntold that I needed to be on some committees, like you need to join the committees, you're gonna help with this. And uh, while at the, at the time I was like, well, this is kind of odd, uh, as soon as I started jumping into it, I started to see the value of it. So Mr. Chuck Corja is the one that got me into AFSIA. Within about a year of my initial engagement uh, at the chapter level, just as a volunteer, uh, I ended up stepping into the role as the young FCN chapter president for the Northern Virginia chapter. Um, while I was in that role for about a year, I set up a new board of directors for the young FCNs, mapped it to our, the Northern Virginia chapter, which is actually the largest chapter in the world, uh, and greatly increased the engagement and the involvement of a lot of our young FCNs. That was my goal. From there, I actually uh, moved on to the primary board of directors for the Northern Virginia chapter, served there for a year or two before being asked to serve in a regional role. Uh, so Tina mentioned the regional vice presidents. There are also regional young FCN chairs. There are two, supposed to be two per region. Uh, I know a lot of the time that's difficult uh, to actually find two in specific regions. Um, so I was asked to serve in that specific role, in a regional young FCN chair role, which put essentially me as that counterpoint, that middle point between international and the chapters for the young FCN. So I then interacted with all four of the chapters in the national capital region. Uh, I sat in on their board meetings. I tried to introduce myself to as many of their uh, board members as I could, figured out how we could better engage, figured out what sort of joint events we could do. Uh, so there's a lot of different things that a regional young FCN can do and in some, to some extent is expected to do. And Pat and I have actually had a few discussions about, about this, about what young FCN should be expected to do and what, what their charter uh, needs to be at that regional level because it can be a, a difficult thing to try and navigate. But to me, the role of that regional young FCN is truly to create uh, an atmosphere where the different chapters in that area can collaborate, can figure out synergies, and can figure out ways to move forward, especially in this very virtual world right now. Uh, I'm so excited that the Atlanta chapter included the other chapters within the region very specifically because we do need to operate in a different construct at this point. So working at a regional level, I think, is going to be very beneficial for a lot of chapters. Uh, from the regional young FCN level, I then uh, moved into an international role. Uh, I was, it was less of all and told, it was more uh, highly recommended that I actually run for the international president position, uh, representing the national capital region, just because in general, of my engagement, I had started working a lot more with international, with Tina, with Susan, with Sean, uh, and with some of the RVPs. And by developing a lot of those relationships, uh, I was kind of pinpointed as someone who could potentially take over that international role. So that was all, all of that happened, all of that progress and growth in different positions has happened within about a five year period. Uh, I've been in the international role for 
about a year and a half now. I was trying to remember what month it was. Uh, and it's been pretty fantastic. It's been a, a very, to some extent stressful, it's been very busy, but it's been a lot of fun figuring out what a lot of the issues are uh, and figuring out what our strengths are and how we can better engage with people moving forward. So that's kind of the quick history of where I came up from and how I progressed in one way, at least from the chapter to the region to international. I'm hoping that kind of lays out a better understanding of what that structure looks like, because I know that was always tough for me. All right, next slide, please. So, uh, what I do wanna do is quickly introduce what our international structure looks like. And what we, what the group is overall called is the Young FCN Advisory Council. So the blocks that you see in dark blue, I think it's dark blue, yeah, dark blue, uh, that's our XCOM, that's our executive committee. So Clinton Austin and I are the co-presidents. Clinton is down in the Tampa chapter. Uh, he is a representative of uh, basically anyone outside of the NCR, but he and I collaborate on everything around the world. Uh, in addition to that, we have four VPs uh, we have Danny Sava, who's our vice president more on the internal operations, Rachel McLean, who is our vice president for external operations. Each of them have three separate committees underneath them. Uh, and you can kind of see, and I won't dig in too much, but you can see who my chairs and co-chairs are for each of these committees. And the committees are membership, chapter engagement, and events under Dr. Sava. Uh, and then we have PR Signal, which includes social media and basically anything public relations related. Uh, panels and uh, awards committee uh, falling underneath Rachel. Actually, it's Rachel Machia. I apologize for the wrong name on that one. She got married a few months ago. So uh, in addition to those two VPs, we have two international VPs. So Master Sergeant John Walker is located in Germany. So he covers down very heavily on the Yukon AFRICOM portion of uh, the world of the geographic world for uh, FCA. And then we have Brandon Lester, who's located in Hawaii, actually, who's been very engaged with FCA for a number of years serves as his chapter president as well. He's located in Hawaii and his focus is going to primarily be on Indo-PACOM. Um, it says not Europe and that will of course cover, you know, other geographic regions. He and John are actually collaborating pretty heavily to figure out how we best cover down on areas like CENTCOM uh, and SOUTHCOM. So much, many, many things are coming in the future for that. So I'm very excited about how the structure has kind of fallen out, the guys and girls that we have uh, in our committees and on our, uh, or excuse me, executive committee and on our individual committees overall. So I'm really excited to work with these men and women. Next. So I won't belabor the next two slides very much since I've kind of already talked about this, but just to give you guys uh, an overview and understanding, uh, I have uh, two co-chairs or two chairs for each committee, but then within each of those committees, I also have subcommittee members. So I'm always looking to expand that membership or that membership committee is one of the more popular ones actually. Um, any of these, though, I'm always looking to add new people into that group because uh, it's actually a, a, a tenant that I got from Chuck Cordray many years ago was that uh, it's better to have more, more volunteers, right, because you can essentially divide that labor and it makes it a lot easier to continue engaging your volunteers. If you've only got a few folks and you keep giving them too many things, you burn them out, it's harder. So we're always looking for additional volunteers. We're always looking for more people to include and involve uh, because ultimately with more of us, we end up having a lot of fun um, and getting a lot more accomplished. So we can skip external and go to the XCOM and BOD update. Scroll down a little more. Uh, sorry, could you go to the, the next slide? Perfect, that one. Uh, okay, so I won't run through all of this because I think a lot of this might not make sense to folks that are brand new to FCA, but this is the update that I gave to the FCA International Executive Committee and Board of Directors. Uh, and this was essentially to back brief them uh, on what our accomplishments are uh, over the past quarter to six months, uh, what our current efforts are, uh, and then some of the challenges that we've faced. And the main point is to highlight areas where we feel we've made significant progress and how that will affect uh, or benefit FCA International overall. And then to focus on current efforts and where we could potentially use assistance from other folks on the BOD or XCOM, as well as with the challenges. So the ones in blue are the ones that I'll highlight the most. So DXD is disruptive by design. So uh, we actually have one, we have article submission in every signal magazine and we host a panel that is specifically young FCNs in technical fields with specific um, specific uh, specialties, uh, obviously for each panel, depending on the uh, event. 
Uh, we host one of those at every larger uh, FCA International event. So as of now, we do it at FCA West, we do it at TechNet Cyber, and we did one at TechNet and Dopaycom last year. Uh, in addition to that, we're coordinating with chapters that host smaller events, but are still pretty significant events, uh, including the Alamo chapter has their ACE event every year. Uh, the Lexington Concord chapter has a large event excuse me, our Maritime IT event that they have, or New Horizons event that they have every year as well. We're doing, we did a, a Disrupted by Design Young FCN panel at the New Horizons event, and we're doing one for ACE this year as well. And at the same time, we're trying to figure out how we want to kind of reconfigure these panels and these events and how we can best uh, assist chapters in FCA International with more virtual events. The newsletter distribution is something that my previous co-president, Jeremy Spund, and I uh, initiated about a year ago. So every quarter we actually publish a newsletter with specific information that is relevant to our young FC and community overall. Uh, we post highlights from recent events. We try to spotlight a new young FC in uh, every quarter. Uh, we do letter from presidents and we highlight upcoming events. So we, uh, our last one was in May. So we've got another one coming up in uh, August actually. So if you guys are at any point interested in hearing about that, please just let me know. Uh, 40 Under 40 Awards is not in blue, but it's important. So 40 Under 40 Awards uh, we is, is completely run by the young FCNs. And we, we work with FCA International to get all of the marketing uh, out for that. But what it is, is if you know somebody that is exceptional in their field, uh, exceptional in the technical manner, management uh, level, and um, education, and their volunteer activities, so just an, essentially an exceptional person, they could be nominated for this 40 Under 40 Award. And we had such a fantastic slate this year. Uh, I was super excited. We've been hosting uh, happy hours actually with the um, winners over the past. We did one last week, we're doing another one in September so we can actually engage with some of these award winners um, because they truly are fantastic people and have wonderful ideas. So moving on, because I think I'm running out of time. Yes, thank you, Paul, I have five minutes. Uh, Rebranding Young FCA. So while it's super awesome to be able to go to 40 and still be called young, uh, we do want to make sure that we are accurately representing all of our uh, Young FCA and um, constituents as well. So we're looking at different ways and new ideas to actually rebrand our Young FCA and community overall in order to better represent everybody as possible. So as you guys are starting to get engaged and you have ideas, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, challenges, unique value propositions, uh, I love FCA International for putting together value propositions. And one of the things that I've discussed uh, with Tina and a few others is actually how do we tailor those specific value propositions to actually be more focused on geographic regions, on chapters, uh, and on you know, what the specific uh, requirements are, basically. Some chapters are much more focused on uh, FedCiv, on DHS and health. Some are focused more on DOD. Uh, Northern Virginia and DC are both very heavily focused on DOD. And some chapters are very focused on IC, so you don't actually hear from them very much. Um, so there's a lot of different uh, value props for these, just within, with, within the CONUS sphere. There's a lot of different value props that I think need to be tailored for specific regions, specific chapters. So it's an idea that we've had and we're continuing to kind of pursue to figure out how to best tailor those things. Um, even when you go over to Europe, when, when Tina was mentioning FCA Europe, uh, I sat in on the business meetings with them for two days last year and very specifically uh, got that idea, right, of, okay, everybody is looking at this very differently. Everybody is going to get a separate benefit or needs to propose a different benefit for their FCA chapter. And so that was kind of, to me, where unique value propositions came into mind. So that's a challenge that we always see. It's something that we always want to work on and we will continue to do so. All right, next slide. This is my last slide, I believe. Yeah, so um, last slide is ways to get involved. So unsurprisingly, the best way to get involved is to actually you know, volunteer, which uh, as we've kind of mentioned, it's a little bit more difficult right now because we're not running events the same way that we were before. Um, so there's a lot less physical interaction, a lot less physical work to be done. Um, but we still need volunteers. We're always looking for new people to get engaged, primarily because we need new ideas on how to actually uh, progress FCA, uh, progress the young FCNs, and figure out a lot of this new way that we need to work. Uh, if you, you absolutely need to reach out to your chapter president, your young FC president uh, or chair, um, you've already obviously got a lot of their contact information that was hosting this call for your region. Uh, reach out to your, whoever your ARIAC is, which for this region is Doug Sinema. And uh, Pat Harrington is the RVP. So the RVP and the ARIAC should work very closely together. And that's one of the best ways that the ARIAC is actually going to be successful is by that close 
collaboration with the RVP and Pat is fantastic at that. So I always appreciate her inputs. Uh, and last, you can reach out to international leadership. Um, anyone on the XCOM that I mentioned above, I'll have my contact information below. Uh, and as mentioned before, Raleigh Levitt is uh, AFSIA employee. She is the young FCA liaison and coordinator. She and I con are, are in frequent communication in order to make sure that we're uh, doing everything we can for the young FCAs. And last note, uh, you do get out of FCA what you put into it. Um, I have found that to be very true over the past few years. I have put a lot of my time and effort into uh, FCA, but honestly, I've gotten a ton of benefits. Um, I'm happy to discuss that more in depth. If anybody's curious about other aspects of this or uh, wants to dig into ways to get involved, please feel free to reach out to me. My contact information is on the last slide. And the last slide is my get off the stage one. Awesome, thank you, Alicia, for, for sharing that with us. Next, I wanna give the stage to Pat Harrington. I know Alicia just mentioned it, but Pat is the FCN Regional Vice President. Um, Pat, go ahead. Okay, I didn't put together slides because I'm only gonna talk for five or less minutes. So I just wanted to give you a quick idea of what's happening in Georgia. As Alicia said, uh, basically uh, our young FCN for the Georgia region is Doug St. Armand. And if you need to get in touch with him, I can send you his email at any time. Meanwhile, Blair, uh, Taylor, Paul, thank you for putting this together for the Georgia region. We really appreciate this. Uh, to get this started, uh, we our young FCNs have been kind of uh, inactive for a few years and we're really getting some good leadership now and I'm really happy to see that. We're still looking, uh, Middle Georgia has had a, a great young FCN program uh, in fact, Jesse came from there and we're trying to find a new person to take her place so that we will have regional representation from Atlanta and from Augusta and from Middle Georgia. Uh, for those that don't know, we have three FCA chapters in the Georgia region. The Augusta chapter is our largest. Uh, it has grown large due to TechNet Augusta. Uh, the Atlanta chapter is our second largest. And then Middle Georgia is a fairly small chapter. They've just graduated to medium size and they may be going back down now since, uh, since COVID-19. I haven't checked their membership lately. Uh, we have meetings uh, once a month with all chapters, with all uh, chapters. Uh, and those basically are on Wednesdays for, um, for Middle Georgia, Thursdays for Atlanta, and then uh, Fridays for um, for Augusta. We set those up so that we could attend all of them. I will say Augusta has varied theirs, and they now do their luncheons on um, usually on Tuesdays. Uh, the idea behind this is that everybody was doing their their board meetings on the second Tuesday of every uh, second week of every month, and their actual luncheons on the fourth uh, week of every month. Augusta again has changed this slightly to, or maybe it's Middle Georgia. I think it's Middle Georgia changed it slightly to get their meetings and their, um, their um, board meetings a little bit closer together. We are looking at a fourth possible chapter in Georgia. Uh, we've had lots of inquiries from Savannah, from Columbus, from Valdosta, on all those different areas. So we're looking at the possibility, uh, none of those areas have a large concentration or signal or comm or IT type people in the military environment or in the government environment, federal government. So we're looking at possibly setting up a virtual, um, comp, a virtual chapter and we're working that, uh, in fact, the gentleman that's in charge of that will be joining us for our next quarterly uh, chapter president's meeting. So we're looking at how can we do this and can we do it smartly and is there still the interest to really make this happen? So there, if that happens, we'll have actually four chapters in the Georgia area. Uh, what is happening right now is of course with COVID-19, uh, a lot of things have, have slowed down a little bit. The all three chapters in the Georgia region were holding their meetings on base on bases are on post. 
Uh, that has now changed, of course, with COVID-19 because they couldn't even get on base for a little bit. So Atlanta has probably gone a little further in starting to set up virtual type meetings at lunchtime, et cetera. Augusta has actually done an awards conference on uh, with Zoom using a, um, doing a, a community awards conference. Uh, we're still working with Middle Georgia. Their, their population, their chapters made up more of the military members. So they've had a little bit more difficulty in really getting things started up and going. So we're still working with them to see how we can make that happen and how to make that a, a good experience and a good, good opportunity for all the chat, for all the members. Uh, this November, early November, 1st of December, uh, there will be uh, TechNet Cyber will be occurring starting on the 30th of November. Uh, we're looking at possibly going to that, waiting to see how everything turns out. Next year, there will be actually two TechNet Augustas. One will be in January, the week of the 25th of January. The second one will be in August. Uh, there is a, uh, we were planning to do a Homeland Security Conference this year in Atlanta. That has been postponed till next year with the big conference. This will be a very small conference coming up in uh, Atlanta this next year. And then the year in 2022, we'll actually have the big Homeland Security Conference. At least that's what's planned right now. Same thing with Fed ID. We were going to have a Fed ID conference in Atlanta in September. Uh, that will probably move to 2021 or 2022. We're not sure yet when. That went virtual this year. So there's a lot going on there as far as conferences in the Georgia region and things where you can do more networking and actually doing some of the things that uh, that Alicia and, um, and Tina have talked about. Uh, we are all busy with the STEM work in, in the Georgia region. That is a big part of all of our chapters. We're also big into CEU classes. Uh, a lot of things going on with, uh, with trying to get continuing education on, especially on 87, uh, 80, 8720 type training for the military folks that have to have that. Uh, we haven't been able to break into getting the other type certifications, uh, working with, a lot with Sheila McCoy at headquarters to see how we can make that happen. But so far we've been unable to do that. Uh, but that's that's kind of a real quick wrap up of what we've got actually going on in Georgia. Uh, does uh, Paul, if you have any other thing you want to add to that, please go right ahead. No, uh, thanks, Pat. Appreciate it, ma'am. And uh, for everyone on the line, uh, again, uh, Pat Harrington, who's our regional regional leadership there. So. Uh, well, I know we're on the hour here, so let me make sure we're cursed everyone's time. Uh, everyone's got a hundred mile per hour life, I'm sure right now, but uh, yeah, you know, so bringing this all together, first of all, thank you ladies. Really appreciate it. Um, I've learned a lot. Hope everyone got some, uh, some benefit from this today, especially being new, but kind of the way ahead real quick folks, before we all, um, break away, you know, the whole point of this is like Tina was sharing and Alicia was really emphasizing, this is for collaboration, networking, coming together bringing in integrated solutions, how can we best support the federal government, the DOD, academia, et cetera. So to wrap up a couple of thoughts on the way ahead, being local to Atlanta, really looking forward to one, getting out of this COVID world, what Pat was just sharing, Homeland Security Conference here local in Atlanta, you know, really building that presence in Atlanta now, being a major hub of I the IT space, right? I mean, we did experience some BRAC uh, prior, but as you folks know, Oracle, IBM, Microsoft's in Alpharetta, Veeam is now in Alpharetta, uh, VMware is down in Sandy Springs. I mean, in terms of industry supporting the DOD and federal government, this is a saturated great city. So um, with that being said, would love to connect and bring everyone together. I had an initial distro email that I pushed out. If anyone is joining after, being, after this meeting being forward who was initially invited, uh, please reach out to Taylor or I. We're gonna consulting a list and we're going to be having a more energetic monthly event uh, calendar. So just to kind of give you an idea, what's, what's the way ahead look like between collaborating after this meeting um, with uh, conversation and uh, how we can help each other in each other's spaces. But two is uh, upcoming in August, we're going to have a great conversation. Uh, the CTO of the, of the federal team for HP, 
is going to be coming on the line and sharing uh, his, his perspective on CMN, CMMC. And then in September, we've got a great meeting with uh, the actual chief software officer for the for U.S. Air Force, who's leading the initiative for DevSecOps. So those obviously are two major points of uh, focus right now that I know all of us on the industry side, as well as the end user side, uh, need to be cognizant of. And hey, how can how can we best support? How can we bring that capability to the table, right? So with that being said, um, I'm going to connect with Felicia and Tina offline and see if it is possible if we can share these slides or if that's something that we can share indirectly. Um, two emails and contacts, please reach out to us and we'll, cons we'll uh, add you to the list. And then for upcoming events, not only those two major events I was talking about, but Taylor and I are going to be trying to figure out in this COVID world of how to come together virtually. And then hopefully we do make some progress and go back to normal where, you know, we would have folks coming together, whether it be a happy hour, um, these coaching mentoring sessions, we're bringing in strategic leaders to give you the opportunity to talk to them, understand how to best uh, improve yourself. But also too, lastly, you know, what we didn't talk too much about, but it's a great point to ask you is, you know, personally coming back from a deployment and coming in the hearts of the airport and the CUSO and AFCA members there welcoming service members that's a big deal. So that's great to see on the volunteer side. If you're interested in that and uh, true vocational stuff, AFC is a great platform for that, as well as the mentoring coaching. We have a lot of junior enlisted around here at Dobbins Air Force Base, Clay Armory National Guard. We have Cybercom down in Augusta, Columbus. Um, so this is going to be a statewide effort going forward. And if you have a feel like a vocational calling to help those um, look at the next step in their careers or their professional development in general, this is a great organization on that aspect as well. So with that being said, uh, thank you everybody. I saw we had a healthy group on the line today, close to 30 folks. So thank you for coming out um, for a working lunch and looking forward to staying in touch. And we'll keep you guys posted on the website as well as emails for upcoming events uh, going forward. So thank you. And Paul, sir, anything else on your side or good to go? And thank you guys for taking care of this um, and everybody have a good day. All right, great. All right, have a good one, Owen. Thanks. Thank you.